our um, pastor, uh, a new friend and partner in Christ in Kosovo, and uh, Leonora from the same church who is in charge of evangelism outreach and administration at the church. And we will hear some news from them of what's happening in Kosovo and how we can pray for Kosovo. Father, we praise you and worship you today, Lord. Uh, you, are, you are a wonderful Father, and you are a gracious and kind God, and you rule all over the earth, Father. And even in the places uh, where it seems like all we can see is darkness, you are still present, and you're still moving, and you're still accomplishing uh, things that are part of your beautiful plan for humanity, Lord. Right now, I want to thank you, Father, for connecting us with our brothers and sisters in Christ in Kosovo, Father. And uh, Lord, we are humbled and honored uh, to have the opportunity to stand beside them, Father, in the work that they're doing for you. Lord, we ask that you bless this time of prayer that we're going to have together, the time of fellowship, the time of building relationship and making connections, Father, that your spirit will be with us and lead us and guide us. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, Pastor Artur, tell us a little bit about your ministry, about yourself, about your country, and how we can pray for you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Once again, greetings to all of you. It's a joy and a privilege to be able to talk to you and uh, get to see your faces online from far. Uh, yes, my name is Artur Krasnici. I'm a Kosovar. Uh, live in Kosovo. Uh, now, uh, I know for you in U.S., it's quite hard and difficult to find Kosovo in the map. However, there is a tiny little country called Kosovo somewhere in the world map. We can, uh, if you search in the world map, you can, uh, we can only put uh, the first letter K in the country. Then we have to go to other countries to put the whole name. <laughs> so that's how big Kosovo is. Um, just so you know, I mean, we are a neighbor with Albania, North Macedonia, Serbia, Montenegro, close to Greece, close to a little bit Italy, in that part of the Balkans. Uh, not to confuse you much, but uh, we are Albanians, ethnically. We are ethnic Albanians. However, we live in a part of Kosovo, which used to be part of Albania a long time ago, but now it's country on its own. And it's uh, fighting, it's working, it's uh, moving, creating its own identity with a lot of hardships and a lot of difficulties. Now, I, uh, I'm a Christian, serve in this country, so I'm aware saying this, and I don't undermine God when I say this, but we exist as a country, as a nation, because of America. So literally, you wouldn't find a Kosovar alive, not even one, if it was not for U.S. This is 1912, this is 1945 in the Second World War, and recently in 1999, when U.S. intervened and brought military troops to Kosovo to stop a war and a genocide that was happening in our country. So we were occupied by Serbia and uh, faced a terrible war. But uh, finally, in uh, 99, we were liberated. So we are still under so-called US protectorate, US protection. So we have US base here, we have US embassy here, and uh, US is still keeping peace in this country. Okay. So Kosovo is 96% Muslim, 96. So it's a very unusual, very, unique somehow, that Muslims in Kosovo love America here. So Kosovars, they really do. They have a great respect for America. They believe that uh, they own their lives somehow because uh, it was for U.S. that we survived from an occupation. And not only that, but they helped us to get independence in 2008. And they are still militarily, also socially, economically looking after our country. We're a very small country, very small country, and uh, about 2 million people 
live in Kosovo, 2 million. Now, please, I will ask you later, I mean, tell you when, when to, to pray, but this is a part to pray that this relationship with America and Kosovo continues to be strong. Also for the sake of the gospel, but also for the fact that sometimes it has changed. Now, I'm not into taking sides. I know U.S. is already polarized and you have a lot of fractions there. I mean, you a lot of political problems. But for us, it was quite difficult years during Obama administration. Very difficult time. And because Kosovo was completely forgotten. And somehow, after what happened in Afghanistan, Kosovars are very afraid that America may pull over and leave us in the same situation. So Kosovars have that fear that Biden's administration might do surprisingly, uh, steps towards leaving Kosovo. So that is a fear that many Kosovars have. But this is politics, okay? There is another beautiful story, and that is a spiritual story. You know, Albanians in general are very proud that they are mentioned in the Bible. So in the book of Romans 15, 19, Paul says, with signs and wonders and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ from Jerusalem all the way to Illyria, Illyricum. And Albanians are the only nations that come from Illyrians. And the territory of Illyria is where we live today. So Albanians, we learn in school, in our history, that we were one of the first with ancient Macedonia, Greeks, that we received Christianity. We are also proud to say that the first two martyrs of Christianity died in, in, in this region here, the uh, martyrs in the, in the early centuries. Proud also to say that we gave Mother Teresa to the world. She was also from, 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 from Kosovo originally. So Albanians have a very proud history of Christianity. Yet, Ottoman Empire occupied us, ruled us 520 years. 520 years we were under Islam. They destroyed our nation. They converted us to Islam. They destroyed our heritage. They destroyed everything that was in our nation. Everything. Converted us into Islam by force. Built mosques and destroyed churches. And Albanians generally are an example, a sad example. When you turn your back to the Lord and then an enemy comes and takes your land. And that's what happened with us. So now... There was a dark time, 1912, all the way on with the gospel. 1967, Albania declared itself atheist country by constitution. The only atheist country in the world where in the constitution was considered crime to believe that there is God or to believe in God. Imagine an entire nation declared itself by constitution that God does not exist. And but Kosovo was not in Albania, so we lived in Yugoslavia, a little bit, a little bit free. Now, if you are a little bit an, of, a, I mean, of your generation, you probably know, remember Yugoslavia. So under Tito's time, we had some freedom for the gospel, but yet it was still communism. But Yugoslavia was the first communist country that allowed Billy Graham to come and preach in a communist bloc after the communists start shaking. You know, this is 78, Billy Graham came to Yugoslavia, and uh, 78. So it was the beginning of the open doors of the communist bloc of preaching the gospel to this part of the world. And uh, 1979, 1979, uh, my father got saved as the first Kosovar that came to the Lord. So I've had a privilege to grow up in a Christian family. Uh, at that time, there was no church here. There was no Christians in this country. It was communism, and uh, you know Christianity was looked down. How did 19... your father accept the gospel? How did he become a Christian? Uh, we we were Catholics by by religion. Uh, there are about two percent Catholics in Kosovo, but very nominal Catholics, and uh, you know still communists. I mean, still communists, but yet by name common uh, Catholic. So somebody gave him a New Testament. He took while he went to serve army. In the communism, you had to serve army for, for one year, obligatory. So he took Bible with him. 
and they start reading. And then somebody there saw and said, oh, I know where there's a group of Christians. So he joined them. So he got saved, 79, in Croatia, former Yugoslavia. He got saved there. And then finished army, came back to Kosovo without having any Christian to fellowship. But, you know, people start praying about Kosovo after Billy Graham came to this part of the world. And uh, 19, uh, sorry, yeah, 1981, a first missionary from U.S., a young couple from Texas, decided to come to Yugoslavia. They came to Zagreb. 1982, they came to Kosovo. There was no church, and they just heard that there are a family that have been converted, nothing else. So David Nabor was an American, still alive, lives in America, was the first missionary, American missionary, who came to this part of the world. 87, translated Psalms and Proverbs into Albanian language, found Gospel of John and Luke, also somewhere translated. So the Bible was not translated in Albanian language. I mean, a nation completely forsaken for the Gospel. So June 1985, June 1985, they opened the first Albanian-speaking church in the world in Pristina, the church that for the first time was worshiping God in Albanian language for long generations. This is the church where I'm serving right now, here in Pristina. So this church began in 85 as the first Albanian-speaking church in the world. Uh, David served two more years, and then they, the authorities kicked him out. So he was not allowed to come to this part of the world for almost 30, 30 to three years. But uh, I'm saying this not for any political reasons, but to just share with you that in time of difficulties, they were missionaries from U.S. that were bold and strong to come and preach the gospel to the communist world. And they knew that they probably be, may be in prison. They knew that probably they could die, but they were strong enough to do this. Now, when David and can tell better this story, but when he went to the authorities and told them that we bought a piece of land in Kosovo, in Pristina, and we want to open the church to worship Jesus in Albanian language, the communist authorities told them, look, even if Christ himself descends in that yard, you will never have a church there. This is their response in 85. And with that response, they went back and started the church. And it's been there since 35 years now. And communism is shamefully collapsed. So I'm speaking of people, uh, Americans, who had the courage and faith to trust God and come to this part of the world. So the history of the gospel in this part of the world has wonderful stories of people who trusted God and who sacrificed their lives, who were willing to pay the price and leave their comfort zone and come to the unreached areas and be a witness for Jesus. So let me just tell you, and this is the first time I'm meeting all of you, that uh, for that reason and many others, we pray for America. We pray that God keeps your country strong for the sake of the gospel, that God keeps America blessed for the sake of the gospel, because God has used your nation to bless many nations of the world and to bring gospel and bring hope to the areas that were under oppression for generations and never believed that there is hope somewhere. So through a long time of history, uh, God has used your country and your nation to bless many nations of the world. And my nation is one of them, not only in the political sense, but in the spiritual as well. And from that on, thousands, would say, of Americans have uh, left U.S. and found in the world map this tiny little country of Kosovo and have continued to be a blessing and to help us in the work that we're doing. You know very well. Uh, there is a story in the book of Acts. Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia. And in that vision, there was a man calling him to come over and help us. And uh, you know that uh, I'm speaking from the same geographic territory today. With the same call 2,000 years later. 
to the church in U.S. to come over and help us in this time. Kosovo has never in its history been more threatened by Islam than it is now. Since 2000, when we got freedom, you know 2000 we got free, we had 220 mosques in Kosovo. 220 in the whole country. Today, we have 860. Tells you of the aggressive invasion of the Islamic world, reaching the young people, using the poverty, and trying to do everything to you know, brainwash, to radicalize the young people of Kosovo. For that reason, and many others, we believe that we have responsibility of the church to do the work that we are called to do. And that is to be a witness for Jesus in this part of the world or to, to the end of the world, like probably to some Kosovo is. Uh, the church in this country is young. As I said, 35 years history. Most of our people are young people. Leonora is one of many others who serve in our church. She was saved in 1993. Comes from Muslim background, like most of the people in church. Probably I am the only one from Catholic background or two others. So most of the people in our church come from Muslim background. And uh, for many of them, it is a big price to pay when they leave Islam and come to know Jesus. But what a joy is to see that. And what a joy is to serve together with them, reaching other Muslims. Mm -hmm. So when you come to Kosovo, you will have this opportunity to work alongside many ex-Muslims who have left Islam and are serving Jesus and bringing gospel to towns and villages. Leonora has a team that are going village to village, door to door, municipality after municipality, knocking on the doors and bringing New Testament to the families. And their desire as a group is to be able to visit every home in this country, not only once, but again and again, and just share the gospel with them. Well, they have wonderful stories. They have also difficult stories. There have been times when it was threat. There was a time when we had to call police. There are issues in court. However, the joy of just sharing the gospel with people has been greater than any other circumstance or difficulties. So, dear friends, sisters in Christ, brother, or I don't know if Denise, brother or sister, <laughs> I don't see the sister. picture. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's no face there, sorry. However, it's a great joy to talk to you, and uh, I really look forward to see you in Kosovo. I uh, we had uh, only we haven't met with uh, Chuck and uh, yet. Just had a, a, several phone conversations, but I was so happy, blessed to hear that uh, you're considering coming to Kosovo, coming to help us in this part of the world. You know, everyone wants to go to Albania. Albania is easy, but Kosovo is better. <laughs> Kosovo has more challenges, uh, more excitement, and uh, more need. You know, I think Albania has, I, I'm not wrong now, but last update that I know about 600 missionaries. Uh, Kosovo has about 35. You know, it's a tough place here. We know that. It's not easy. However, there's a joy to serve here. And uh, it's... Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to share the gospel with the young people in this country. Majority of population of Kosovars are young people. Uh, they are more open for the gospel. They are very pro-American, and uh, that is an opportunity that you should use. I mean, not for political reason. Politic has done its job. Wonderful. Thank you. God bless you. Everything is good. But now it's the time for the spiritual part. And uh, most of the people speak English here. And uh, you'll be surprised that you'll find people all over speaking English. So, yeah, I'm sorry if I was long. Uh, we have too much history here. And I know it's, it's difficult to bother Americans with a lot of history. But uh, I just wanted to give you a little bit update about Kosovo. And uh, maybe I can answer any questions if you, if you have. No, thank you so much. This was a great overview of the country because it is important for us to know the roots, the history, um, and, and also the history of your church. So 
that makes us, and I know I'm speaking for everyone on this call, that makes us that much more excited to partner with you. I personally can't wait till February and uh, when we're there on the ground working together with you. Um, before we, um, I ask you about some of the prayer needs that we can lift. Leonora, would you like to add something or share something? Um, once again, hello to everyone, to the rest of you that I didn't manage to say hello. It's good to meet you. And as Pastor Arthur mentioned, that we are excited to meet you in person when you come on 2022. So definitely that um, I wouldn't like to add much more, but just kind of to hold us on your prayers. And um will be important that as we share the gospel, as Pastor Arthur mentioned, and as we go as a team, that God will lead us and would guide us, and that we'll see the fruit of our work for the kingdom of God here in Kosovo. Amen. So what are some of the specific things that we can pray? Yes, uh, I mentioned in the beginning, the political situation is good to pray. Uh, we still have tensions with Serbia, uh, tensions that sometimes can evolve very easy and come to a, like we had two weeks ago. Not to scare you, but you know there are tensions in the ground. Uh, Trump administration was a little bit more involved in uh, doing peace talks uh, with between Kosovo and Serbia and trying to solve some problems. There was a meeting that happened also in White House when there was signed some agreement, but then. His administration left, and that is forgotten. So please pray for the political part, because it is important. Second, I think it's good to pray for the economy of the country. You know, like everywhere else, you know, with this pandemic situation, it has been hard. But poor countries, I think, have suffered more, because there is no help from government, and the economy has shaken a lot, you know. In a country where you have a lot of unemployment and uh, you know uh, not not a, a strong economy, it has created problems now because it, it is becoming a problem. So it's it's I think very important to pray for the economy situation in this country. And uh, thirdly, which is also probably most important, is to pray for the church uh, that uh, you know will stay strong in times of difficulties and challenges that are ahead. Uh, particularly with Islam, I mean, you are aware in U.S. now, like probably the rest of the world, Islam becomes aggressive and aggressive more and more. Unfortunately, there are people who still believe that, you know, Islam uh, is a peaceful religion, but it's not. And we who live with it here uh, can prove that, that there is nothing about peace in Islam. So we want people to know everywhere that Islam does not preach peace. Actually, uh, it's a quite, uh, quite aggressive against you know anything that has to do with peace. So, our our prayer request is to pray that church will be strong, whatever uh, challenges we'll face, that our brothers and sisters in this country will will keep their faith no matter the challenges they go through, and especially for those who are daily you know in the field, who are going like Donora said with evangelism, who are, you know, doing kids programs, who are, you know, visiting villages, houses, that, you know, they would, they would stay strong for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we call it our circle of prayer. So I will uh, start the prayer and each person I can pray out loud as the Holy Spirit leads you. And then uh, Pastor Artur, you will wrap it up in the final prayer then. Does this sound good? All right. Uh, for, for the rest of you, don't forget to unmute your mic when you're praying. Father, we praise you and worship you today, Father, because you are the Lord over Kosovo. It doesn't matter what the numbers show, who is the majority, who is the minority. 
This is your nation, Father, and it belongs to you. We just lift to you this country, Father. First and foremost, I lift to you the church in this nation. Yes. Lord, I thank you that you moved with your spirit upon yes. the heart of Pastor Arthur's father, Lord, and he accepted you becoming the first Christian in this land, Father. And Lord, we just pray that this church that you have blessed yes. with 35 years of existence, yes. Father, yes. will be yes. strong in you in spite yes of all the circumstances, anything that is happening in the country or in the world, Father, your house, your body in this country will remain strong, Father, under your divine protection, supplied with all the needs, Father, and protected from any harm. Lord, we just pray for the most favorable political outcome, Lord. It's not up to the politicians to decide the future of the country, Father. It is up to you. And yet, we pray that you move upon the hearts and minds of the politicians here in the United States, in Kosovo, in Serbia. Father, those who are the decision makers um, that uh, that can make decisions and sign laws that will bring peace and prosperity to Kosovo. Father, you have established peace in this country. And in the name of Jesus, we pray that this peace remains, Father, that this nation will not be shaken by wars, conflict, strife, Lord, that there will be peace among people, that they will learn to resolve their differences and issues in the peaceful manner, Father. And um, Lord, we claim every heart, every mind in the nation of Kosovo for you. It may not seem possible right now in the natural, but you are the God of the impossible. And with you, all things are possible. Father, I lift to you, my brother in Christ, Pastor Artur, I lift to you, Leonora. I lift to you, every worker and minister in the church, Lord Jesus. And I speak your divine favor over them, Lord, that they will be strengthened and encouraged and refreshed, knowing that they have family in Christ here in America that is willing to stand by them, to support them, uh, to help them, uh, and, and together accomplish your great plan for the country of Kosovo. And so we just thank you, Lord, for making this connection between World Missions Alliance and my brothers and sisters in Christ and Kosovo, Father, and we look with expectation uh, towards February for what you have prepared for us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Father, I thank you for this precious pastor's heart. Father, for all his beautiful heart of love for people. Thank you for all that you brought him through. But Lord, I thank you for where you're going to take him. Open doors wide, swing wide open the doors, Lord, for more ministry, Father God. And we thank you and we give you praise. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Father God, in in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, for the testimony of this church In Kosovo, Lord, I believe with all my heart that you have placed in our lives, God, the desire to go and not only minister to them, but them to minister us. Father, I thank you for the faith and the love of God that they have. And I pray, Father God, you prepare the way before us. I pray, Father God, that you would send forth your Holy Spirit and you will saturate that country, Father God. Lord, that you would move in the homes, you would move in the businesses, God, a supernatural manifestation station of your glory and we pray father god that we would go and encourage our brothers and our sisters love them and serve them lord with everything we have within us we thank you for this pastor we thank you for these people and would you speak your blessings and health and strength over them in the name of jesus christ Amen. amen amen Father God, I just thank you for the opportunity to come together and pray for the needs of Kosovo. Father, I just pray your hand be upon the missions that are going to Kosovo, Lord God. God, I speak over Kosovo. No weapon formed against Kosovo will prosper, Lord. Amen. Let your hand be continually working in the midst of the enemy, Lord God, as you prepare that table before them, Lord. And 
God, you are going to free souls and free lives, Lord God. I just thank you for who you are and what you're doing in our midst, Lord, and that we have an opportunity to come together and pray, Lord God, and that we not forget and we continue to pray for them, Lord, and and bring them before you daily. And I just thank you for their lives. I thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this opportunity to be able to pray together, to share our hearts together and our desires together to see your kingdom uh, move forward in the world. For Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters whom, even though we have not met physically, but you have put in something in their hearts for the missions. You put in something in their heart to be able to reach the parts of the world when there is a great need for the gospel, to be able to go uh, long and far and encourage the church, encourage the body. Lord, I pray that as they prepare and as they pray and as they look forward, Lord, to come to Kosovo, that you bless them, Lord, that you speak to them, Lord, that you strengthen them every day of their lives, Lord. I pray that you bless their plans, their preparations, Lord, that you work out every detail, Lord, and we just Pray against any hindrance or any, any, any plan or anything that comes against your plan and your will. And Lord, that's what we pray and join our hearts together tonight, that may your will be done. Lord, that you would lead each and every one of them, Lord, to, to continue uh, as they have done, Lord, for a long time to just bless the nations of the world, to encourage other churches and to be able to be a blessing for people, even in Kosovo. Lord, I pray that you bless their country, bless their ministry, bless their churches, Lord, as they continue to be a light. And Lord, tonight I want to continue to pray for, for their country, for America. Lord, that you keep it strong for the sake of the gospel. Lord, that you give them right leaders, and right people who would fear the Lord and who will do right things in your eyes. Lord, I pray that you bless their country, Lord, and protect that no plan of evil will ever conquer against the United States, Lord. For the sake of the gospel, for the sake of your church, Lord, for the sake of your kingdom, Lord, that you will continue to bless them and use their nation, use their country to bless nations of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray blessings as they have been blessing others, Lord, that you will look out of mercy and grace from heaven, Lord, and pour your blessings upon the United States for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of your kingdom and your holy name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Arthur and Leonora. Did anyone have questions? We have a, a little bit of time for questions and answers. Yes, please. Some questions. <laughs> so I know where, where, you st where you stand or how much you know about Kosovo. <laughs> no, no, just feel free. Well, we, we will be honest. Our knowledge of Kosovo is limited to what the news media gives us. And you know that this is always a very skewed perspective. So this is why uh, I very much appreciate you sharing with us about the situation from your heart and uh, especially the situation concerning the church. This is the information that we really cannot get anywhere. So because the news media is not interested in that. I also wanted to tell you that um, there will be a lot more people who will see this because some of them were not able to join, um, you know, this meeting because of their schedule. But we send the recording to those who were not uh, able to meet, uh, join us on this meeting. So I really appreciate you um, taking that time to give us the overview and uh, we look forward to what the Lord has prepared. I know that God has a plan. We, in our human understanding, um, can guess, you know, why now, why this, but God has a beautiful plan, and we just look forward uh, to be a part of that. Amen. Well, thank you. It was, it was an honor to be able to share with you, and I uh, hope to see uh, all of you in Kosovo. And uh, as I've said earlier, and you know, your country has done a lot for Kosovo. Uh, we were very blessed in these last three years 
to have a, a born again Christian, uh, born again uh, U.S. ambassador. So he, he just finished his mission. He, he's back in states uh, from North Carolina, but he served for three years. So he worshipped with us in the church, and it was a great joy and uh, honor to to have him. He was previously serving in Turkey, so he is the one who helped uh, uh, Andrew, who was uh, imprisoned by Turkish government by Turkish mm -hmm. Branson, Turkey. Andrew Branson. Yes. So mm -hmm. he was here. He was here with him last month, actually in Kosovo. So Andrew I'm, Branson. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. very cool, very. Because cool. the same the same ambassador helped him, uh, was intervening for him when he was in prison in Turkey, uh, during ah. the. So, but uh, yeah, uh, he was a, a U.S. ambassador here. Now we are praying for the new one, and hopefully it will be a right one and good one because. It's in this country, he's not just a U.S. ambassador, but has a lot of influence in the country, you know, because uh, pretty much a lot in our country is is uh, led by U.S., a lot. I mean, our politics and a lot of things. So what U.S. says things, which is good. So far, it's good, unless depends if, if things go crazy there, then we also bear consequences here. So that's why, you know, when you elect a president there, you don't have to think only for America. You have to think for the world. Because, that's very you know, true. Very true. Well, make, that's they, another great prayer point, a good ambassador, because since that's such an important position in your country and uh, we're in sort of an interesting time here in America, we just really need to pray that uh, God sends you the right ambassador um, for, for the future of Kosovo. Yeah, so, please do. I have a question. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, I, I think this addressed to uh, Chuck. And uh, my name is uh, Gimbi uh, Kuvuna from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Oh, and I nice can to attest. Meet you. Uh, and also, I can. Um, uh, I, I, I happen to run a youth program in leadership and entrepreneurship. Uh -huh. And I can attest what Pastor said that when you pray uh, and when you like here in the country, you have to think about well, globally too. Because uh, if a program has uh, taken off, it because of the wife of the ambassador, uh, the ambassador's wife in the Congo at that time, uh, she's the one that she was. A, she's a Christian, yeah, and, uh, and then uh, came in uh, mentor in, uh, uh, um, a mentor and taught leadership to our youth. So we have taken from 2008, we have taken uh, young people in the program in leadership and entrepreneurship uh, using biblical value from 12 youth in 2008. Now we have impacted more than 2,500 youth by now. So my question is, uh, I know um, in, it's on, only uh, Americans can take part of that mission trip or uh, other na um, um, uh, foreign nationalities can go to Kosovo uh, because uh, most of our youth of our program, we have uh, also, we teach uh, how to can serve and uh, um, uh, be uh, ambassadors around the world. So that's a good question. Right now, our teams uh, are, you know, as far as World Missions Alliance, are mostly limited to the U.S. citizens and the Canadian citizens. And that's due to some visa situations and um, uh, other, you know, complexities of travel. Uh, you know, there is uh, there are some exceptions. We've had people from Japan join us and some other countries. So, um, you know, the best thing would be if you email us um, about that issue or if it's convenient for you to call our office. Um, I don't know if you have the ability to call um, from there. Uh, yes, I don't I'm, know. I'm, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm calling you from Philadelphia. I'll be going oh, you're back in Philadelphia. next month. So, yeah, so yeah can... uh, maybe Denise or Emily or Jamie can uh, message you our phone number if you don't have our phone now, our office phone number. And so just give us a call and we can talk about that. OK, thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining and uh, blessings to you, Pastor Arthur and uh, Leonora. We will be in touch and uh, have a
Have a wonderful rest of the day or evening as if you're in Kosovo. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Yes. We're in Kosovo and we have uh, 15 minutes to curfew here. We still have the restrictions for COVID. Oh. So, so but good. I mean, uh, it's perfect time, but uh, but we're doing very good. So don't be afraid for COVID. You can come easily. <laughs> we have, um, <laughs> well, you know, by that time, because it's almost 10 o'clock, right? We're normally in bed <laughs> yes. by the end of the day of ministry. So yes. the curfew is not a problem by, uh, for us. Unless your services last a long time, and then we'll be in church. You tell us. No, what no. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. It was an honor and privilege to see and meet each and every one of you. God bless you. God bless you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you so much.